A state function is a property of a system, and in particular, it's a property that does not depend on the path that the system takes as it goes from its starting conditions to its final or finishing conditions. To help you understand state function, I'm going to use these four beakers of water. They're all being measured at different temperatures with these thermometers. So let's stay over here on the very left-hand side. We have this beaker of water, and it's starting out at 10 degrees Celsius. And let's say that we heat that water up. Maybe we put it on a hot plate and we heat it up until it gets to a temperature of 70 degrees. And then we allow that beaker to sit and cool down until its temperature drops to 50 degrees. If we wanted to describe the overall temperature change for this particular beaker of water, if we wanted to talk about the change in temperature for this beaker of water, remember that the Greek letter delta is our symbol that represents change. So if we wanted to describe the change in temperature for the speaker of water, we would say, well, it started at 10 degrees and it ended at 50 degrees. So overall, the speaker of water overall has had a temperature change of 40 degrees Celsius. And the way that we are calculating that in our heads is that we are taking the final temperature, I'm just gonna call that TF, and we are subtracting from it the initial temperature, which I'm gonna call TI. The final temperature is 50, the initial temperature is 10, and that's how we get a total temperature change of 40 degrees C. So um, now let's consider over here, this situation. We have over here another beaker starting out at the same temperature, 10 degrees Celsius, and let's say that we heated that beaker up until its temperature was 50 degrees Celsius. And then let's say that we wanted again to talk about the overall total change in temperature for this particular pathway or this particular process. And we would say again that the change in temperature for this beaker was again 40 degrees Celsius. We started at 10 and we heated it up to 50. So we had a total temperature change of 40 degrees Celsius. And we calculated that temperature change by again taking the final temperature and subtracting the initial temperature, 50 minus 10, which is 40. This is an example of a state function. We say that the change in temperature, the change in temperature is the state function for this particular system, and the change in temperature is independent of the pathway. All that um, matters in this case is the starting temperature of the beaker, which is 10 degrees in both cases, and the final temperature of the beaker, which is 50 degrees in both cases. And it doesn't matter if we go directly from 10 degrees to 50 degrees, or if we heat it up to 70 and then bring it down to 50. That doesn't make a difference at all. All that matters is where we started and where we ended up, where we started and where we ended up. Energy is also a state function. So we can say that for the energy of a system, and we use the capital letter U to abbreviate energy. So that capital U means energy. It's our symbol for energy. Because energy is also a state function, we can say that the change in energy for a system is going to come from taking the final energy of the system and subtracting it from the initial energy of the system. In chemistry, typically the systems that we're looking at are chemical reactions, such as, let's use for example, water melting. So let's say we have an ice cube, which would be solid water, and we're holding it in our hands and we're allowing it to melt to liquid. In this particular process or this particular system, our initial conditions or our initial um, circumstances would be the solid water, H2O solid, and the final would be the H2O liquid. As you know, in chemistry, we usually call the initial conditions the reactants. And our final conditions, we would call the products. So if we wanted to take this delta U reaction and write it in terms that are more reasonable or more logical for chemists to use, we could say that the change in U or change in energy for a system is the energy of the products because the products are the final conditions in our chemical reactions and subtract from that the change in energy for our reactants, our initial conditions. To show you how we could actually apply that to a reaction such as this one right here, 
we could get very specific and we could say that the change in energy for this particular chemical reaction would be the energy associated with our product, which is water in the liquid state, H2O liquid, subtracting from that the energy of our reactant, H2O solid.